Hello and welcome. My name is Viktor Gamov and I'm a work as a software engineer at Farada Systems. At Farada Systems, we develop enterprise web and mobile application using the open source and uh, proprietary technologies. We provide cross-platform solutions for financial insurance, logistics and automotive uh, um, industries. And uh, today's presentation is a part of our Thief um, Symposium for enterprise developers and uh, in this presentation I'm going to talk to you about uh, upcoming uh, next big thing for web developers um, and um, uh, game changer for web communications uh, about web sockets uh, um, this uh, my presentation is uh, divided into three parts in, uh, in the first part, I would like to talk to you about a little bit of history, uh, what our current options, if we did, uh, would like to develop uh, some kind of application with real-time or near uh, real-time um, uh, requirements. On uh, the second part, uh, I'm going to talk uh, about uh, WebSockets. What is the WebSockets? Uh, how we can start using today if it's... Uh, only like part of upcoming HTML5 and uh, other specific part of other specifications. And on the on the on the last part, I would like to uh, demonstrate some uh, usage. So how we can uh, start using the WebSockets today and uh, how the API uh, looks like in action. All right. So. Um, um, for each and every web developer, there is all um, we we we're using uh, uh, HTML, uh, HTTP as a transport for the web, and we know that our client side uh, server communication is based on um, request response paradigm. So basically, your client send the request um, underneath. Uh, there is a, a TCP uh, connection. Uh, actual TCP connection to the server and when server send your request back uh, you get the data in each and every time when you want to get new data or send some data back to the server you have to do all this uh, repetitive task and um, if you would like your application behave more uh, let's just say more interactive and you will uh, you will want to have some kind of uh, any real-time approach you need to uh, figure out what is the best way you can implement so basically uh, currently there is only three basic um, approaches what you can use uh, to uh, to implement that kind of uh, a real-time uh, data e exchange between client and server the first one is the polling also known as a short polling so with the polling, your client sends a request to the server, and um, with with some you know on on, on timer basis. So for example, a client can send the request each ten seconds, or each five seconds, or each, uh, you know fifteen seconds, whatever. So this is the there is an illustration for this approach. Like you have your key sitting on the, your on the back. Uh, back seat of your car and asking you are we there are we there are we there and you reply back no we're not no we're not no we're not and so basically the response is actually empty uh, the data if there is no data on the server the response would be empty but uh you anyway you're spending um some data because you're using HTTP and you send back and forth um, the HTTP headers uh, and different metadata. And again, you need to open and reopen the connection each and every time. Uh, another option is long polling. So uh, with long polling, uh, the client uh, send request to the server and wait. Uh, uh, server wait for uh, and the client wait for event happen on the server when. Uh, server sends the uh, response back. Uh, response is never empty. There is always some kind of uh, notification message. And uh, this approach is more like... Uh, uh, this approach uh, satisfacts 
HTTP specification. So your server behave like uh, like slow. So basically, you always see the connection uh, to the server on your uh, browser uh, status bar. And the third one is streaming. So with streaming, you just uh, open the connection and the uh, server client sends request uh, and wait for the events and the uh, server stream chunks of data back to client using this channel. And uh, the response is continually append to. So basically the information is always um, like you're getting streams of data. But a um, bunch of kind of smart, smart people and uh, engineers and the programmers decide oh, enough. We need to uh, figure out the better way uh, today. And actually, this the quote from uh, my list in um, uh, the organization who uh, what provides uh, the governance for the WebSocket specification development. And the idea about uh, like around this protocol is to reduce amount of useless data, what uh, browser sends and the server sends back and forth, and reduce actual latency to uh, from like in, in in this case like from 150 milliseconds to uh, 50 milliseconds and uh, reducing the amount of data to two bytes. And basically, they come up with idea about web sockets. Web sockets is the full duplex, the bidirectional uh, protocol, and let's call it like not only protocol because. Let's call it the full duplex bidirectional co communication channel, and uh, this uh, communication channel uses uh, uses only one TCP connection. Remember, I mentioned that when you have uh, HTTP request, and with HTTP request, each and every request underneath opens new connection. With WebSocket, uh, once connection established, you're using the one the same TCP uh, connection. So let's uh, let's start. Let me start talking about the web sockets. So basically, web sockets first of all is the standard communication protocol. Uh, this uh, this protocol uh, and uh, behavior and uh, internals of this protocol described in the RFC uh, sixty four fifty five and. Uh, this protocol supports low overhead bidirectional traffic from the web browser to server. Uh, also, the protocol uh, describes um, how the server should uh, behave, like little parts of the server side, how different uh, WebSocket messages uh, should be processed, etc. Second part, WebSocket is the client-side API. With HTML5 specification, uh, HTML5 specification actually introduces new WebSocket client-side object. So basically, in your window, when you do like window dot, you can find new object called WebSocket. WebSocket. Uh, on the next slide, I will go through this uh, client-side object more detailedly, but uh, you must understand that there is a, sp a part of the HTML5 specification which defined how this object should be implemented and uh, what the developers expect from the WebSocket beh behavior. And the third part, as we mentioned uh, on this slide, if we're talking about the protocol and the protocol defined convention between two endpoints, in our case, the client side and the server side, browser and our Java backend server. This uh, also involve new uh, programming paradigm for uh, Java, Java servers. I'm talking about mostly Java because this uh, presentation apply to mostly to Java developers. Uh, if you would like to like develop full, you know, front-end and back-end, 
on the back end we will talk about java mostly today so and oracle and the community java community they understand importance of uh, this uh, new paradigm of uh, real-time communication so uh, they come up with new gsr gsr 3356 in this gsr um Oracle and the community they trying to develop a best approach to integrate and uh, best approach to create a framework from uh, for the uh, uh, for the backend technology and uh, hopefully uh, in uh, there would be new specification and new part of Java E7 umbrella specification and there would be a specification for web sockets even even today, and I will show you later on the next slides. Uh, uh, you can start using uh, this uh, these APIs. Uh, there is a project called WebSocket SDK, and this project uh, apparently would be uh, a reference implementation for uh, Java APIs for the WebSockets. So. Uh, Let's start uh, looking into WebSockets uh, with a little bit of details. And uh, here on the on the on this slide, uh, we start we start we start uh, talking about the WebSocket client side API. So in this slide, uh, you may see the interface definition language and this uh, part of uh, of code defined uh, WebSocket object inside browser. And you might see here a few important things. First of all, uh, there is a properties uh, called ready state. So each and every time uh, your uh, WebSocket object could be in connecting, open, closing, and closed states. So there is uh, four states for WebSocket. So when you... Um, <coughs> and you... So when you when you, when you create a uh, new object WebSocket object in the constructor of this um, object, you need to provide URL to your endpoint WebSocket endpoint. And this before, um, after you create new object and before your application or your uh, uh, client side code uh, receive open a message the state would be connecting uh, equals zero uh, also there's um, important things called uh, the extensions and protocol properties the protocol property uh, is defining what type of protocol can be executed on top of the WebSocket. So at this point, we're using WebSocket as a transport, but for some kind of sub-protocol, which would be run on top of the WebSocket, we can define any other uh, existing today protocol, like SOAP, SMTP, FTP, etc. So it's possible to implement that kind of things. Also, your application can provide extension or your extension to WebSocket protocol. Uh, and uh, when you actually create this object, you uh, the browser can populate this extension information from the server side. So the server side can send um, information about supporting protocols, sub-protocols, extensions. And uh, another very important um, think is the method send. So when you create, uh, when you create a new, when you create a new object uh, WebSocket and you establish a connection to server, you can send data, and you can send the arbitrary string. You can send uh, blob data uh, and uh, uh, array of uh, actually it's byte array pretty much. And next important thing, what you need to do with your programming model is define event handlers for your uh, WebSocket object. 
so on this slide you you you, you may see uh, the code snippet uh, how you basically this is how you actually work the web sockets so the the work with with web sockets very easy api very very easy very light and straightforward so uh, basically on the four, uh, fourth uh, line of the code you can see that i'm creating new uh, web socket object and i am passing the uri to endpoint um Speaking about the URI, uh, WebSocket uh, define a new new schema uh, for uh, for URL. So basically, here uh, this WS WS means that we try to we trying to use we are trying to use the WebSocket connection. Also, there is another one called uh, WSS, which means that uh, the WebSocket secure. So basically. Uh, when you establish this that connection, this that can uh, if you're using uh, WSS, um, we can create some kind of tunnel to uh, between client and server. It's like a secure tunnel uh, with a secure socket layer. Next thing, what you usually would like to do is define is define the handlers for different types of event that might occur. So basically, there is a four types of event: an open event, message event, close event, and error event. And uh, with uh, there is a corresponding uh, handlers, for example, for uh, to to receive and uh, uh, open event, you need to define the handler for on on on, on open and etc. for or for the rest. Um, for for example for message event you you can get the data as a part of data property of this message um all the um, effective and uh, payload uh, effective payload from the server is uh, inside this uh, data property of event on uh, on uh, message event and uh, yeah for for the communication, uh, you also might know, would like to implement some event, uh, some error handling. So uh, uh, at this point, you need to um, define handler for uh, error event, and this is uh, similar. Similar, you need to have. Uh, you probably might to have to handle um, the closing. Uh, actual close event. Uh, yeah, this is very simple, and uh, there. This is the pretty much it. So this is all JavaScript you have to write. Uh, I'm I'm not putting here any uh, JSON and encoding decoding, and uh, I'm not putting here that that kind of information. But for communication, it's very straightforward. It's very easy. So you. Um, uh, keep in mind that uh, the creation of the WebSocket object is asynchronous. So basically, uh, when you create new uh, a new uh, WebSocket object, so the next it, it, this procedure goes um, with um, asynchronous way. And when actual WebSocket object is created, the on open method would be invoked. So keep this in mind uh, when you um, uh, will uh, program your application. So what's happened, uh, th there's one, also there's uh, one important thing what uh, I have to mention. Uh, WebSocket is support cross-domain, uh, cross-origin communication. So basically you can connect to any WebSocket endpoint which is not might be or might not be in your in your ori origin so uh, basically this is a good approach for say for different portals so you might have uh, some kind of dashboard with bunch of um oh yeah you can also create more than one uh, web socket object per page so and you can use uh this approach for a portal like solution so you can you can have uh, multiple windows uh with uh, no windows i'm talking about as some kind of uh, the window element 
on your page or iframe or some div um and these windows can can uh, can have uh, their own uh, websocket object and uh each and every socket object can, uh, can connect to um, different endpoints um if you would like to prevent or secure your uh, endpoint you need to check the origin property in the inside the HTML uh, HTTP uh, request uh, on the on the few more slides in next few more slides I will I will show you how you can uh, where you can get this information from the from the request so let's uh, proceed with what's happened actually when you do when you do creation so how you create new new uh, WebSocket object and what's happened next. So basically uh, to negotiate, to to tell server uh, that you, your client is nice and cool and new uh, and support all these uh, nice features with the full duplex communication, um, the actual client side code need to send so-called upgrade request. So basically upgrade request is the absolutely arbitrary get request but uh, this get request uh, contains um, like key value pair inside the header which called like upgrade and the websocket and uh, <clears throat> I will show you uh, I will show you uh, the example of that kind of request on the next slides after that server if server supports websockets uh, at this point server sends back information about okay so i'm also cool and uh, i can switch the protocol so basically response and the response code would be not 200 okay as as we as we expect because of the result of uh, regular get but uh, the code would be uh, one on one uh, switching protocols and the in, in, inside the header we can get information of what into what protocol we can switch uh, server can send back us information about uh, uh, what protocol um, uh, it supports and uh, uh, what sub, sub protocol it supports uh, after we connected uh, internal internally browser change ready state to open remember from the uh, from the previous slide, uh, our ready state was um, connecting at the very beginning, and now our ready state is open. So you can you can actually uh, try it uh, yourself, and we'll see. Um, and after that, we can start listening the messages, and we can start uh, listening the actual events from the server side with data uh in the okay so um let me show you how how this um, actual upgrade uh goes all right so i have my application running on the glassfish open source edition this is night nightly build i'm using the build uh, 43 but uh, right now uh there might be another version with uh i i haven't i haven't tried a recent uh, and updated uh, version but it should be fine and i'm also using the websocket sdk and i have very um a teeny tiny application this is just echo uh, echo client so uh, my application sends data sends uh, the string to the server and server replies back with some uh, append this string with some message but the very beginning uh here my application already connected but okay oh let me let me tell you one more thing so i'm using here i'm using uh, the uh, google chrome uh this is the canary edition it's a, a early version but um the web sockets also supported uh, in Google Chrome since I believe version 16 or something. So, but uh, this uh, this canary edition uh, version of the Chrome contains very 
useful thing. As a part of developer tools, they provide now the WebSocket um, uh, part of uh, the uh, WebSocket tab inside the network uh, tools. So we can actually see the uh, web, 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 WebSocket communication in our application. So here I already filtered um, all uh, information from the server. And on the very beginning, my application uh, sent uh, sends the connect uh, the request for upgrade. So we send in here the connection upgrade, and we send in a version of the web socket what our uh, client or our browser supports. And here we send uh, sends information. Excuse me, uh, about uh, to what protocol we would like to update. Also, we send in them sending to server origin and also we sending the security key this is kind of uh, public private key uh, communication so we we sending the private key and uh, the server can uh, he, he can uh, understand uh, our our key and uh, proceed also uh, send the send us a uh, response and uh, there is a string called uh, the part of the header is the connection upgrade so which said server supports uh, upgrade to websocket and there is also uh, upgrade websocket the uh, part of the header and as i said this is the arbitrary get this is our url so we actually point to a WS localhost uh, server. First, this is the uh, the how it's, uh, the deployment disk, uh, uh, context root, and there's a endpoint path, and uh, with the response, server sends code one hundred one switching protocols. So this is. And if we go right now into uh, the console and try to let me actually see what's the what's the name of this PS. Do we have? No, we don't have WebSocket. So if I write, uh, if I would like to see what's the ready state of my um, of my WebSockets. Uh, now WebSocket is connected, so ready state should be one. Oh, so ready state is not actually why it's good. Maybe uh, I. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, probably uh, my, not probably, it's definitely uh, my browser window was open for a long time. So it's uh, session uh, expired and I, I, I got uh, this very odd uh, ready state, which is actually closed, I believe. Zero connect. Yeah, it was closed, but because I didn't implement any uh, keep alive uh, code on my very primitive application. Um, but now, yeah, ready state is the uh, actual uh, the one. So we, we connect. So when we start sending, uh, sending messages to server, this is we send, this is we receive. And again, with these uh, Chrome tools, we can also see what was actual frames of data. And we sent, this is data what we sent, this is the data what we received. Uh, very straightforward and uh, uh, very, very easy. So, and again, with these uh, frames of data, there is no overhead of uh, headers. Uh, this is the first and last uh, HTTP request and the response. And now we start uh, just saying, uh, Teeny tiny data. So this is was length of our data, what we sent, and the length of data what we returned because server 
append some data on their side. Let's return to slides. Uh, on this, uh, this this figure, I have more detailed uh, explanation. Um, also, it's good to um, to use another tool. Uh, this tool called Wireshark. Uh, this is very uh, you know, very Unix and very Linux like uh, application and GTK uh, for for UI. It's, it looks like not very. Um, native to uh, Mac OS, but uh, this tool do uh, does very a uh, very good job to to hacking uh, underneath hacking actually the TCP IP any net network traffic. So uh, what I, in this in this uh, in this slide I I uh, I would like to to show this sequence. So basically, uh, the number one here, the, the first place is the client sends request to protocol upgrade. And we see that we, like, this is the, the, the pink, pink uh, uh, arrow. We send the request. And on the yellow arrow, we can see that server sends response back and confirms protocol upgrade. Now, our internal uh, ready state of the WebSocket uh, equals one, and so now you can see on the green uh, green arrow. And when we say, when we click the the press me button, we send actual data. So uh, we can see the blue uh, blue uh, arrow, and WebSocket message from the client always masked, which means that. Uh, browser uh, encode uh, the actual message with base64 encoding and uh, putting the key uh, like the encrypt this message with, uh, with with the key which which um, a browser uh, retrieved from the server and uh, the server replies back like rep uh, rep uh, re response from the server is the uh, might be or might not be masked. So, and I would like to you to take a look on the length on the request and response. So, when you see the green, uh, like a first um, get request, you see the length at 346. And the next, uh, when you start sending data, actual data uh, through WebSockets, the amount of information and uh, the the size of the request is uh, relatively smaller it's not relatively smaller it's smaller that uh, the amount of data uh, is smaller that we uh, sent with regular uh, uh, request even if there is also in this in this inform in this uh, the message, uh, there's also some kind of uh, the service information like opcodes, different um, some parts of uh, like very 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 service information, and uh, yeah, it's 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 very efficient. So let's uh, let's take a look on the server side API. Uh, what WebSocket SDK, uh, the part of Java 7 um, application gives us, uh, it provides few very uh, useful and very simple annotations. So basically, this uh, WebSocket SDK they, in, at this project, they trying to provide, I believe that there's, it's a similar approach uh, like you do if you're familiar with the JAX RS, uh, RESTful uh, web services for Java. So you in, in JAX RS, if you would like to expose your Java Pojo as a RESTful web service, you just need to annotate the method with a path annotation. And you also need to define the, uh, like, uh, annotate, uh, annotate some method with uh, get or 
post uh, annotation and defined what type of data it produces. For example, here it's very uh, straightforward for WebSocket also. You, you just have to annotate your class as the WebSocket and define the path. So it would be uh, like relative. So you have a host, you have port, you have uh, 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 context root. And after that, you have this uh, endpoint. So echo, so when we call WS localhost 8080 uh, my application name slash echo, uh, we will able to um, invoke the this echo method. It's very, very, very easy with uh, uh, Java E7 API. Um, but there is not, not uh, if, if you're not using Java E, there is also good news for you because in open source community uh, there's also uh, people uh, doing uh, a lot of work to implement the web sockets things into existing application servers like a tomcat in the tomcat uh, starting from version 7.0.27 um, they implement uh, the web socket as a as a part of the standard standard uh, uh, like archive so when you download version 7.0.27 and you can start programming web sockets but okay let's uh, before uh, let's take a look on how the code looks like uh, okay so when you programming with the uh, tomcat and you would like to use the web sockets uh, you need to use uh, you need to extend a special class called WebSocket Servlet. You see, this WebSocket Servlet is a part of the uh, Apache Catalina package, and uh, to like like you extending HTTP Servlet, you need to uh, actually implement um, some some methods. In our case. We need to implement uh, create WebSocket inbound method. Uh, this this method creates the uh, inbound message. And here, um, this method returns the message inbound. A message inbound. It's also, I believe, it's abstract class. Yes, this is it's abstract class. In this abstract class, we need to override uh, two methods. And uh, this methods uh, used for defining behavior of our servlet in case of text message or in case the binary message. So when we would like to serve the text message, we need to provide our logic here. And when we need to de uh, de serve the binary message, we all we need to provide implementation details inside here. It's also um, quite straightforward. But uh, again, uh, this API is the, it's very proprietary for the Tomcat. So this is the API, it's not portable, and you cannot use the same API in the other. So for example, you cannot uh, just drop your application to another container. How you can avoid this, we will talk a little bit later on the next few slides. So basically, for WebSockets, for simplify or um for simplification or for helping for you know for different kind of purposes there is also few frameworks which uh what allow you uh to use uh, the the web socket the first one is the jquery web uh, jquery socket gs this is the project open source project and um, this is the plugin for the jquery uh, javascript framework and this uh, framework allow you to use uh, the the web sockets uh, with the fancy uh, jQuery uh, style syntax. Uh, another one, this is the part of the uh, huge, uh, big atmosphere framework. Uh, we will talk a little bit later about the atmosphere also, and the atmosphere GS. Uh, uh, this also kind of plugin for jQuery. Uh, this uh, this framework works not only with the web circuit but uh, uh, it works with the long polling polling 
uh, the streaming, server sent events, all these kind of things. Um, this framework support to picking automatically the best connection for with best available connection. Um, of course, this framework uh, needs to be used in conjunction with the atmosphere framework itself on the java side but uh, anyways it can be it can be used uh, separately also uh, with a little bit hacking and there is another one guy called socket io socket io it's a quite interesting framework also because socket io also provide not only client side implementation but if you're familiar with the thing called node.js or node this is the the server which written on this C++ and uh, this server uh, uses uh, V8 JavaScript engine, the same JavaScript engine uh, what Chrome browser uses. And this uh, the server, uh, the actual server side code could be written on JavaScript. So this socket IO provides the framework for both sides, from the client side and the server side. So and you can start uh, and you can write the WebSocket enabled application using this uh, node uh, node uh, server. Uh, also, this socket IO framework can do uh, fallback, and this framework also provides emulation for WebSockets. For example, it can use a Flash player, uh, f actual Flash uh, application, as a uh, as a part of the emulation so it can emulate the sockets if there is not if if there is uh, there is no implementation of web socket on the server side or oh, on the client side sorry yeah so this is kind of very interesting also from the server side even today there uh, there is a bunch of the familiar to you uh, names uh, and the servers provide uh, internal so-called native implementation of the WebSocket. By native, we we were talking about that uh, there is a frameworks or there is a ability to write WebSocket application but using non-portable APIs. For example, uh, last year on the fourth uh, symposium for the enterprise developers, we demonstrated uh, how we can use the Glassfish dash grizzly api because pretty much grizzly this is the framework what glassfish uses underneath as to handle http stuff and all this uh low level uh, http tcp communication or as i as i mentioned here a few slides ago tomcat with tomcat you can start writing the uh start writing the application even today but uh, this this is this API. It's not portable, so you don't you cannot just use you can, cannot just pack your war and drop it everywhere. Uh, Netty and Jetty they they provide their own implementation of the web sockets. And again, the problem not only with unportability between different servers, but for example, in case of Tomcat, uh, after release of seven uh, zero twenty nine uh, version of the Tomcat, they drop. Uh, backward compatibility to a seven zero twenty seven. So and at this point, currently you might think that development of the web socket might uh, turn into some kind of nightmare when you have a bunch of, but a bunch of of uh, servers which uh, provide their own implementation. But uh, and what should we do? What? what, what can we can we do something with this? Uh, and yes, uh, like Obama said, uh, we can do it. So um, there is a, as I mentioned before, the Atmosphere framework. Atmosphere framework is the open source project uh, started by Jean Francois Arcand. He's the former uh, Sun uh, employee. He participated in the Grizzly development and the Tomcat development. And right now he is working on the startup and he supporting and developing the Atmosphere framework. First of all, Atmosphere framework, it's very, it's a portable framework. So you can actually, if you're using the Atmosphere framework, you're just writing against their own, their APIs. And how, 
uh, framework would handle and how a uh, framework would uh, leverage uh, internal internals of the underlying container it's not uh, your business so the f this um, framework can automatically uh, detect what technology is used on on the server and pick the best approach uh, to use for example if you write your application and you can drop it on the tomcat and the framework can detect okay this is the tomcat 20 uh, 7029 and we can support their api and for web sockets we can start using web sockets but if you drop your uh war into jboss uh which not currently uh support web so uh, web, web sockets you basically cannot uh, cannot use web sockets there but atmosphere itself can figure out okay so this is the uh, jboss okay we, let's try to use the comet uh, the long polling or streaming or whatever and uh, the, again with the atmosphere gs there is a very uh, a nice integration so atmosphere gs can fall back uh to different uh you can use one client can use long polling another client can, you can use server sent events and another client can use the web sockets it's very, very easy so uh, as i mentioned uh, this framework can automatically select the best transport and uh, you're not depending uh, on underlying container so i encourage you if you if you if you're thinking that you cannot use right now this uh, java e7 uh, web socket sdk take a look on the atmosphere atmosphere is uh, very interesting and very uh, uh fast moving the project uh they doing very very interesting and crazy things for example uh, currently uh the few 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 uh weeks ago they uh, announced the thing uh for example if you use uh two uh you have the browser with two open tabs and these tabs connected to one uh, web socket endpoint you can share actual tcp connection between two tabs so it's kind of interesting thing and uh, the source code is over there and there there is a very active community mail list and and stuff so just just take a look all right and uh, uh there's a few more slides and after that we're switching to demo um if you're thinking about web sockets and you're thinking today okay so uh, okay it's interesting i i like the idea of a real-time communication I like the idea of the full duplex uh, the communication over the web uh, but you're thinking, okay, so how you, not to how, but uh, for what purpose I can use it? And there is uh, also a bunch of uh, things where uh, WebSockets actually shine. Uh, okay, so basically any data intensive and any time, um, time dependent or uh, time sensitive information like live trading or sports information or the social uh, media or social networks updates this information uh you can you can uh, you can use a web socket to implement uh, that kind of application also because of the low latency low data overhead you can implement um controlling devices over the web even yeah it sounds sounds crazy but uh, uh it's possible to operate with some devices through through the web um chat applications multiplayer online games with low latency would be just it would be just new step for interactivity and uh, real-time uh, data exchange few um few links about uh, the web circus what to read uh, on the free time so first of all i encourage you to to take a look on these two uh, first links it's the web socket uh, the client side api and the rfc for web sockets protocol it's very interesting reading it uh, it's um well written and uh if you like like technical documentation it's very interesting it's uh um there is like you you'll find it's uh, this uh, this document's very entertaining. I found it's very entertaining. I believe you too. You will. Um, 
there's two links for the web sockets uh, how to on the tomcat uh, apache.org website link to websocket sdk um, definitely you have to look uh, on it um, with ability to just annotate your podios it's very um, i believe it's very good selling selling point of this uh, server side api uh, and uh, don't don't think about that okay just only glassfish but uh, um, in uh, my organization i'm not using the glassfish in the very near future after uh, after final release of java 7 specification there would be a bunch of the application server what support what would support this specification there would be web sphere what you're using on your uh, on your organization or JBoss, and all the server uh, will support the web sockets. And the last one this is the project called Autoban. Um, in the, this website, there is uh, they have um, uh, the framework for I believe it's for Python, also for for other purposes they have the test suite. So. And you can see uh, the kind of scorecard of the servers and what server support what part of the specification. So it's very interesting if you uh, look in some kind of a place where you can uh, read more information about what's already here uh, and how the ser current servers. There's not only uh, the Python servers. There's a Java, the JT. Uh, a few more um, uh, the the servers, Java servers, uh, what uh, which support uh, which supports the web socket. Okay, and uh, let's time to demo. So basically, I uh, I developed a uh, very two easy to understand examples. First one uh, you have seen already today. Uh, this is the echo example. It's very easy actually. I just picked this example from the WebSocket SDK. This is, you know just very easy, very in, uh, primitive. So uh, basically, with the our WebSocket endpoint echo, and let me open the uh, echo. And let me open it side by side. So here I have on the very beginning of my application, I, I create a connection to, to this WebSocket endpoint. And as I said uh, before, I define open listener on message a listener on error and on a message okay on message on error and uh, send basically on open i'm just putting information on the screen that uh, our application is connected to 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 websocket and when i received new message from the server i put it this thing on the screen from again from the event dot data property i'm getting the actual data from the server in our case it would be our own message plus this uh this string uh bracket from your server another bracket again in case of error uh, there would be uh, there would be uh, like uh, oh yeah it's red one uh, uh, some kind of red text with the error actual uh, it's very easy to um, to understand and to use uh, you can get the source code from the github project uh, there's a github project on my profile the websockets demos in the websockets demo you have a java e7 uh, to um, to run to to build application, you need to run this this command, uh, and 
you need to first of all you, yeah you you can you can easily build because the everything is on on maven repository but um uh, to deploy and run, you need to have uh, the, the Glassfish version 4. As I mentioned uh, here in my in, in, in my uh, server, I already have the Glassfish version 4 build 43, but uh, in time when you will see this movie, there might be or might not be a new version. So uh, this thing should be work uh, with new version as well. Uh, you need to check out the WebSocket SDK itself and build it uh, on your own. And after that, when you build the WebSocket SDK, you need to copy this specific uh, WebSocket OSGI, uh, the snapshot jar, into uh, Glassfish modules with overwrite uh, uh, this existing thing. And after that, you need to activate with this command. You just copy and execute on the uh, Glassfish bin directory. So basically, in, in my case, I have... Uh, this is the uh, Glassfish uh, directory. And on the bin directory, there is a command called sadmin. And when you execute this, uh, this, uh, this command, you will be you you can use uh, your in your application you can use the WebSocket itself by default uh, WebSockets uh, the support of the WebSocket disabled on the on the Glassfish and after that you just need to uh, drop this uh, into like application just install the application and you're good to go and another one is the yeah so this is the how let me close this for a little while. This is how the application uh, looks like. So I, I, I have written this application for Princeton Jug, but uh, uh, I can demonstrate it here as well because there is no code changes pretty much. And my chat example, this is a very primitive uh, chat application. And I can start, you know, typing some you know, hello, hello from... Oh, let me let me open another one tab. Let me open another tab and let me put it uh, side by side like this. And this guy, oops, uh, uh, he he don't want to. Okay, like this. So, and here I have um, two applications side by side, and we can start chatting to each other. Uh, and I can send, for example, hello from uh, tab one. And another guy automatically received this. And I can say, okay, hello from tab two. And another guy already received this thing also so let's uh, let take a look on the on the on the code of this um, um, chat bin here the example uh, this uh, this thing is a little bit uh, not not very complicated uh, with comparing to echo but uh, it's very simple again we need to define the websocket path the endpoint. So in our case, it's a chat. Here, um, I would like to use the WebSocket context, uh, context which contains the different information about connection and stuff. Uh, again, if we use in uh, Java E7, we can here rely on the uh, CDI. So uh, and uh, the automatic dependency injection. Actually, this uh, context guy would be injected uh, by container. And uh, on the server side, we can also have a different method to to listen a uh, different event. In our case, I would like to have method for to uh, to listen if someone is connected. And um, in my case, there is a the I I need to I need to annotate this init method with the uh, WebSocket open, and as a as a parameter. As a parameter of this method, uh, there would be object of type peer. The peer, this is with uh, 
appear. This is actual uh, object what represents the other side. Like like his uh, like uh, this is the client uh, client WebSocket, pretty much. And on message here, I would like to when I receive the message, I would like to send this message to anyone in this chat, any person. Uh, in that case. I'm getting the conversations from the context. Conversations is this is the uh, think about this conversation as the connection, and for each and every conversation, I would like to get actual socket, actual peer, so I can send some data into this guy. So basically, I'm I'm just doing uh, for loop, and, and uh, I'm just saying for for each and every connected web socket i would like to send back information what another one uh sent it's very very easy very straightforward and um, chat example it looks also very um let me put it on the here there so no don't want all right so absolutely the same i have let me open the script yes i just put it this information to separate file just for convenience but absolutely the same what you saw on my slides so basically i'm just connecting to this endpoint and start doing the things so i'm sending and receiving etc but it's 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 very good it's very interesting when uh when we have uh, ability to send data between two browsers what about if we would like to have java application and java application would like to talk to our websocket server in websocket apis the surprise surprise but you also can do this and, and very easy and i will show you how we can do it so let me first of all run um uh run my example so i here uh, i here have um I have uh, very uh, let me try to start. Uh, I implement very simple uh, robot uh, for my chat and this robot will post the current server date uh, the time from random uh, on the on, on the random uh, random basis. So basically right now, I have the Java application, which actually talk to my uh, WebSocket server. And here I also have um, like initial request uh, to, to upgrade my protocol. And also um, my client also support uh, version uh, 13. This is very, very nice. And we can still, uh, we still send messages. Hello, hello to robot. And our robot also will see this message. You see, uh, message received, hello to robot. Somebody is, uh, said hello. And we can implement different interesting thing with this. Um, this is very simple, simple example. And uh, you can also find this example on the GitHub page. Uh, on the GitHub page, uh, you can find this example in the project called uh, WebSocket Java Client. Also, there is a uh, how you can build it. There is a small readme. And let me show you a small API and uh, let me show you this example. This very, um, this is my uh, Java client. So here, in my application, I'm using the framework called async HTTP client. This framework also uh, right now developed developed by uh, Jean Francois Arcand. He uh, also maintained this uh, async client, and with uh, Java async client, we have ability to create a WebSocket uh, listener, and we can actually write the WebSocket java application and talk to websocket java server with low latency protocol and you can implement your own uh, rpc style framework so basically your application can you know you can use the websocket to integrate even two servers so you can have two servers which synchronize 
I don't know some some data between or send some some information between uh, uh, each other instead of using um, things like RMI uh, or JMS. You can use uh, the web socket and communicate between. It, you know, that's just example what how we can use, but uh, it doesn't mean that you have to use this. Uh, uh, yeah. So here also uh, with this uh, APIs, uh, we defining uh, the on message, uh, on open and on close um, methods, and again on the uh, just just run randomly um, sending the information to 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 chat. And again, if we if we let's see, let me show you the amount of data network uh, web socket. Oh, we need to we need to refresh. Uh, we need to refresh because it was closed. Okay, so here we're sending like seventy six. Uh, we're sending just effective payload from the server we're receiving like just very um, teeny tiny information so let me refresh and we'll see like new information from the server 76 uh, characters um, you encode characters what we received so but uh, yeah so this is the um, example uh, of how we can use so you can use the web circuits on the client side you can use the websockets on the server set, and you can use the websockets on the regular Java application, on your, uh, on your, uh, on your Java application. Um, yes, I have a few more slides. Uh, I would like to thank you to watching this uh, the screencast. Um, if you would like to more, uh, our website is uh, foradassistant.com. Uh, if you would like to know more about our company, if you have the questions about our uh, symposium for uh, enterprise developers or you have the questions about WebSockets, you can also submit the question to this email info at foradasystem.com. Just shoot us a mail and uh, I'll try to help you. Uh, you can find me on the Twitter and you can find me, uh, you can follow me on Twitter and you can find my uh, the profile on the GitHub. Uh, my my source code of these examples is already there. So if you have any questions or you have any difficulties uh, with uh, building application or getting this application running, just shoot me email um, uh, info at for other systems or just find me uh, reach me uh, reach out me at the Twitter. Uh, I will help you with great pleasure, and uh, I would like to say thank you. And I hope to see you. And I hope you see me watch our more screencasts at uh, the at our YouTube channel. And thank you very much for your time. Uh, have a good night. Uh, again, uh, there was uh, Victor Gamma from Forada Systems. Um, have a good night. Uh, bye.